I like your haircut, Alpha. I like your haircut too, Venus. How are you? You look very handsome. I shaved all the dogs, so I think they're enjoying it. Ashley did a really good job. So we're gonna go to the museum. Yeah, I have been waiting for this for three months. You've been telling me all about this museum that I didn't even know exists. It's in Cartersville, Georgia. Had no clue. Yeah, my dad told me about it. I didn't know either. It seems like we have we, we go to museums every time you come here. Yeah, I'm like, just noticing that. We're running out though. Every time you go to a museum, it seems like something really exciting happens to you. Like getting arrested. We had an outbreak. We had to put our suits on. Oh, that's right. That was exciting. Yeah, that's a good point. So, I'm ready for today. You are such a periodic table dork. I'm, okay, this is what I'm most excited about. They have, it's every element they have like a physical representation of. We're here at the museum right now. There's Brie. It's a really pretty day. Tellus Museum, that's what it's called, right? Yes. I think it's called Foucault's Pendulum, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And it's attached at the top, and the earth is rotating under it, independently of its attachment. So every 10 minutes at our latitude, one of these blocks gets knocked down, and it shows us how the earth is moving, twisting under this pendulum. Bree has just told me something. She was telling me this yesterday, too. Uh, but. Bottom line, she's saying like a brontosaurus is not a real dinosaur. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not, it was a mistake. I heard that they had the skeleton of one dinosaur, I guess an apatosaurus is what we're looking at. And then they had the skull from another that must have just been near it and they combined them and for years thought it was a dinosaur. And when I was a kid, you grew up and you were taught that, that these dinosaurs or what we thought was the brontosaurus would like have an erect neck like a giraffe, but they think it's more likely that they would be extended like this. This is the science in motion part of the museum. Look at this, this is a replica of the 1903 Wright Flyer from the Wright brothers. Really awesome. I did not notice the guy in there. Did There's a guy? Him? Where? You see him, he's in the middle. Like, oh my yeah, gosh, I didn't it. see him. He's a Wright brother. Oh wow, hey Wright brother. If you lived in 1896, you would drive this. Which is pretty cool. Look how small it is, though. I know. Well, hey, 1896, you can't be picky. I'd be happy to have it. Really cool. I want it now. Be cool to cruise around the block. Yeah. Heck, if I could get it up to 35 miles an hour, I'd cruise around town in it. Top speed 20. Ah, this is a 1903 Orient Buckboard. Bree and I were trying to figure out what, what these things are on, on the front of some of these cars. Like, we're wondering, like, it's too old to be a camera. It looks like a lens of some kind. And then it just clicked that they're headlights. I assume it's a replica of Sputnik. Sputnik was a Russian satellite. This is a reproduction of the Apollo 1 command module. Now we can officially say that we have seen this tire in person. Actually on uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis. This is a, a display of all the different space rockets, the major milestones. And it all started with this one in 1926, the Goddard rocket. And then you can see how they just grew and grew. And I was telling Bree a second ago that it's quite symbolic that this rocket is the one that took us to the moon. It's also the tallest one because you can see they all get smaller here. This is still the most powerful rocket ever built. So it's, yeah, it's kind of symbolic of our space program in general. Because when we went to the moon, that was obviously the biggest moral high. Saturn V has six million more pounds of thrust than a space shuttle. Okay. So That's I mean, it is way more powerful. It is way more powerful. That one is only 2.8 million pounds. This one's 8.8 million pounds. Oh wow. Yeah. That, okay. That is a substantial difference. What happened to this guy? For a business jet, you can get a nice Rolls Royce Viper Jet Engine 521. That's what this is. I mean, that is a nice advanced exotic looking engine isn't it it's just pretty there's something just really 
really cool about these 1908 Indian motorcycles? I don't know. I mean, they just look like they'd be fun to ride, don't they? Yeah. The museum uh, cafe looked kind of lame. So we're gonna go to a restaurant and come back right now. But we don't know if they're gonna let us back in. Do you think they'll let us back in? I hope so. We sweet talked the girl on the way in, so. Yeah, she was nice. We just had chicken fingers. We had lunch, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we still have the fossil gallery and the gemstones and the solar house. We were just walking back in the museum here and I, I was looking at this beautiful painting. It's based on the, that photograph right there but uh you know a lot of people think the moon landing was fake what do you think about that i think it was real i believe it yeah i buy it too this is how they bring the shuttle back i believe when it lands like in california and they got to get it back to florida but this is really nice i like this picture over here as well this is a concept from 1972 when i guess they were designing the shuttle they were thinking of ways to do it but this is actually a manned um, part of the, like, yeah, that fly. Rocket. Yeah, the rocket is manned. Thank you, Bree. About to blow your mind seriously right now. Do you see this thing? Look at this. You would think, oh, that's a dinosaur. That is not a dinosaur. Do you know what that is? That is a giant sloth, a mammal, an herbivore. Incredible, look at it. That is, I, I've never heard of this type of animal. You, I, I would have thought it was a dinosaur if you hadn't have told me. Yeah, and I've heard of it before, but I've never seen one. This is what Did he would have looked like. Comparison? A size comparison? I'm here, he's up there. I mean, that is a huge animal. That's got to be bigger than like... An elephant, right? I yeah. I really want to get into like fossil hunting. I want to have my own collection of fossils. Like I want this in my house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dimetrodon. Look at this guy. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, the single thing that you always wanted to see, I, I mean, I like the idea of seeing a giant brontosaurus, whatever, like a giant plant-eating dinosaur. Anything big, right? Right, but then, you know, the granddaddy of all dinosaurs, obviously, is Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, I think everyone would agree. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that what you want in your living room? Only dead? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Look, look at its tail. And just, it's huge. Frisbee catching dinosaur. I got it. Hey, what's going on? Wow. I'm assuming that's a triceratops. Yep, that's Spike. That's his name? Mm -hmm. I wonder why they call him Spike. I have three guesses. Check these guys out. Oh my okay. gosh! That's my favorite. Look at this, is that a turtle? Yeah, a sea turtle? Amazing. Why were things so much bigger back then? I'm telling you, gravity must have been like lighter. I don't know. It had to have been. I just am so amazed that there were things that preyed on this giant turtle. He's so big, like how could anything yeah. eat that? He's 15 so. feet wide. Wow. 11 feet long. I never imagined that something like this ever existed on Earth. It just makes you think what exists elsewhere in the universe. It's so incredible. This is the Loch Ness Monster. This is a gorgeous looking fossil, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is a Triceratops femur. I mean, can you imagine hitting that with your car in the interstate? <laughs> There's no way. We think this is a saber-toothed tiger. It is a saber-toothed cat, but I don't know if saber -tooth the saber-toothed tiger is a different one or what. Okay. This is the American Mastodon. Really nice. So big. What's the tab to see this predator? Aha. Uh -huh. We're about to go into the mineral gallery. This right here is just awesome. It's, yeah, it's an amethyst geode. Look at that, how it just crystallizes. This is a meteorite. These things are so valuable. Um, they're just floating around out there in our solar system. But this one, meteorites that actually hit man-made objects make them worth a lot. I know I've learned that. 
Imagine being asleep in that bed. <laughs> right. It comes through your house, bounces off your attic, bounces off your wall, and lands in your like at your feet. <laughs> I know. A piece of space. Brianna's about to make an Am earthquake. Are slapping this person? I reckon. I want to close this. Oh, lame. My earthquake's lame. Oh, okay. I get it. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, that's a better one. Oh, that's a much better earthquake. Thank you for showing us. Yeah, yeah, you are just totally owned. Absolutely schooled on making an earthquake. Calcium carbonate. But it's calcite, I guess. In chemistry, it's calcium carbonate. That is really nice. That's, this is all calcium carbonate? It's calcite, according to, I mean, in geode, I think that's what it's called. We found the periodic table, and yeah. I'm really happy because I was waiting for it. And what, I mean, what are you so excited about with this particular periodic table? Well, they have examples of each element, like how it's used in daily life. Where's carbon? Brianna's in uh, organic chemistry right now, and well, and general chemistry too. Yeah, at the same time. So this is, your your head is completely filled with chemistry at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, carbon, so what's a real life example of carbon? You and me? Well, right. And, oh, here? And pencils. pencils. And diamonds? <laughs> oh, okay, right, of course. Sure. Aluminium? There are elements that are undiscovered, you were saying, on the periodic table, right? Yes. How do they know that they're even there? Yeah, the thing that makes that really amazing to me is just that even though these elements haven't been discovered, based on the trends within the periodic table, like their size, their electronegativity, yep. they can say, I don't know what it is, but there's an element that goes right here with these specific properties, even though we haven't discovered it yet. Look at this, guys. Rare, total known amount on Earth, less than one ounce, has no known uses. Astatine? What is it called? I guess, yeah. I've... This is a beautiful piece of petrified wood. It's all polished and everything. It's just quartz that has taken the shape of the wood that decayed. And there's a couple of schools of thought on how wood becomes petrified, from what I remember reading. Um, some people believe that it happens really fast, like the sediment seeps in, basically water and sediment overtake an area very quickly and it sets in and it sets there until it obviously becomes quartz. Other people think it takes forever, but to me it seems like if this was organic material, then that needs to happen very quick because that's not going to hold shape for very long. That's what my instinct tells me. So this is gold from all over the world. You decided you like the ugly brown gold the yeah, best? Yeah, I like the ugly brown the best, but mostly because everyone else would pass it up and maybe I would still have a chance to get it. Geodes just look almost edible. Ooh, I like this one from India. Who thinks to break that open? I know. Geologists, but still. I wouldn't. Yeah, it looks like, you know, kind of a normal somewhat, I don't know, I guess you would recognize that as being a different rock. Maybe. And but it would be it dirty open. in real life. And like, you know, it wouldn't be yeah. all. You might not even see the different colors. We're hurrying right now because the solar house that we wanted to see, or that this that one wanted to see, closes an hour before the museum, which is now. now. It's like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we have to hurry up and get there and see the solar house. Actually, this solar house powers the entire museum, Bree was saying. Mm -hmm. And what else does it do? It powers the museum itself. It charges one car, I think. Uh, and I'm not sure what else. It was built for a contest by some university students. This is the solar house we are going in. How much does it cost to build a house like this and live in it? Well, the original prototype cost about three quarters of a million dollars to build. But if we were to build this house today because of the breakthrough of some materials and things, Probably 230, 250. And it's good feng shui action, lots of light. Yeah. I gotta say, I mean, I like the idea of living in a solar house like this because number one, you have great lighting all the time, especially if you're a video blogger. You don't have to like put in special lights in your house, which is good. So like $230,000 will get, well, this is what, about 1,100 square feet? I don't know, 674. Oh, that's it. Okay, so that shows how well I can estimate square footage, but yeah, so, plenty of room for me. What do you think, Bree? I think that it looks great. 
I think for two people, it's very livable. But if you started giving, you know, more than two people. What about four dogs? Yeah, two people and four dogs. Four dogs would probably be okay too. Yeah, look, there's plenty of room. It's dogs great. Are very what kind of yard does this place have? I don't know. But that's the <laughs> look. That's a good yard. Come on, what do you charge us for rent? Got a deck here, yeah, kids really playing. We don't even need to have kids. Cool shower. I really like this shower. Because this house is airtight, they have to have a carbon dioxide sensor because of wow. how you're exhaling. Oh, that's interesting. It's airtight in here. Doesn't that mean they have to have like an oxygen supply too? Uh, well, the system will bring in fresh air when CO2 builds up. I want to live at the TELUS Science Museum. Yeah, you like the solar house now, huh? It comes with kids, everything. It's great. You can have your own family here. <laughs> What'd you say? I have always wondered how solar panels work. I mean, they're, they're these big, like, you know, shiny things that absorb sun, but how do they actually convert sunlight into energy? Okay, photons, particles of light from the sun, are positively charged. So they hit the top. The single positively charged cell is like past from panel to panel to panel until it gets to the bottom where it's negative, and that movement of the charge is what creates an electric current. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So what do you think of the TELUS Science Museum? I liked it. It was, I, it was what I expected, I guess. Um, periodic table was my favorite, and... The periodic table was, was your favorite, favorite thing? Mm -hmm. But only because I knew it would be. Did you not see those dinosaurs? Does anybody agree with her? Nobody does. It's not that it was even the coolest thing, but just in my head it was the coolest. I just love it. Takes all types, I guess. So one to ten, how do we rate this? It was it's normally twelve dollars to get in. We got a great discount today. I got in for free because I have a certain bank card that they have a promotion with that they're giving it free. And you were a student, so you got a student discount. Mm -hmm. so always ask for a student discount everywhere because yeah. they have it a lot of places. It was so it was only eight dollars, but normally it's twelve dollars each, right? Yeah. Okay. Was it would it be worth twelve dollars each? We made a whole day of it, though we did spend about an hour at lunch. Mm -hmm. Well, if, uh, I would say it's definitely worth twelve dollars each if you're bringing kids too. Why? Because there's a lot of really cool interactive kids stuff that we didn't even do, but it seemed like there were tons of kids in there. Having Downside, fun. from my perspective, the museum, a lot of replicas, a lot of reproduction stuff, especially in the beginning there with the transportation and all. Mm -hmm. uh, although they had some original stuff too, but. The Wright Brothers is a replica. Yeah, like, I, I mean, if I'm going to see a Wright Brothers plane, I don't really want, I mean, a replica's okay. I guess it's museum worthy, but yeah. barely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I would give it a 7 of 10 for this type of museum. What, what do you give it? Yeah, I think 7 is good. 7 out of 10. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks.